I've had a lot on my mind, so I kind of wanted to sit down and talk. And right now is actually the perfect time to do that because I've got Koa here and Puppers. They're both practicing place. So it's a very chill and calm night right now. So I guess the main reason I wanted to talk is because I have noticed that as my birthday approaches, I have been thinking about um, how I've been spending the last year of my life. And also um, I have noticed that the dog training business has allowed me to notice more of my faults and my flaws that I would like to work on. So I have mentioned this, I think, before in the past in a different form. And I've definitely mentioned it in regards to Riley, where when I first got her as a puppy, um, I was so obsessed with the perfect dog where you know if she doesn't listen to every command very well or doesn't listen to me well in any environment then it would really stress me out or it would frustrate me and um, that may have led me to train her the way she is now I'm not saying that the way that I train her is bad because of my obsession I'm very proud of what I've done with her but it's more so I get Sometimes I get anxiety or I get nervous leading up to an event in case there's a possibility of failure. So for example, that has really shown itself when it comes to my board and trains because it's ridiculous actually. There have been times where leading up to a training session, like I mentally plan my day where I wake up. So in the very beginning, before I have the dog in a really solid place. I obviously handle the dogs separately. So in the beginning, I would let Riley out to pee first thing in the morning because she's easier and faster. Um, she's a dog that I've taught to, when you go potty, you can do it very quickly, which she does, which is really great. And then she comes back inside. And then I crate her again, and then I bring the other dog out. So in the very beginning, Ko was very, very slow with going out to potty because um, it takes, you know, getting used to that's something you teach the dog. It's not something they automatically do where you kind of do it on command and then um, gradually over the course of days, he has started to pee faster or just like associating it with the word and realizing like what I'm asking of him instead of us just like standing out in my front yard. He's like, what are we doing out here? Why are we just standing around? Now he actually kind of knows like what I'm expecting from him. So the thing is, I plan all that and then like eventually I figure out, you know, after the walk, maybe I'll do a training session or I'll like I'll do a training session and then he'll get some downtime in the crate and then I will train him again. And every time the day goes by and I anticipate needing to interact with him again in a training sense, I get anxious and I get nervous. And most of the reason for that is because I get nervous that as we have our sessions, there may be failure and I get worried about how to handle it. So obviously I know how to handle it in terms of I would just guide him back into the position. Um, but I guess like internally, I just get so nervous about it and I feel like I don't know how to handle it. But then like when it happens, I'm always just, you know, just dealing with it in the moment and just like moving on with the training sessions. Training sessions usually aren't that bad at all. Like he has been very easy to train. Sometimes he is sensitive to needing like slight corrections over things, but for the most part, he has been very, very easy to train. So I shouldn't be having thoughts like this. Um, I definitely make the connection that this strong desire of perfection for everything. I say everything because um, I definitely overly analyze people. I'm very critical of people, very judgmental of people. And um, when it comes to the dog training, since I am now working with someone else's dog and um, starting from scratch, where they're basically like going from having no foundation, no training whatsoever, or like having a very poor understanding of training or the desire to work 
to now, like when we do have the training sessions, um, it's just a big, big difference. So I am trying to focus on, you know, letting go that expectation that I've held on to so tightly. And one of the biggest reasons that I am that way is my upbringing. So when I think about this, the connection is easy to make, but the understanding of why I've adopted it myself kind of, I guess, like, I, I don't understand it very well because, of course, my parents, um, they expected perfection, right? They enrolled me in so many things, whether it was sports, but obviously when it comes to school, they expected perfect grades. If I did not get perfect grades, I would have privileges taken away from me. So there was one time that I remembered being really into the MBA. And if I got a B, uh, I would have ESPN taken away from me because I compromised with my dad. I struck a deal with him. I wanted to watch NBA games. So can we please have ESPN? And he was like, okay, but once you get a B, we're going to have it taken away. And eventually, yes, I had it taken away. So lots of moments like that in my upbringing that um, remind me of just the way that I'm being right now. There were definitely moments where I was studying for a test. And then I would ask my dad to quiz me like, hey, help me study for the test by quizzing me on the information I've been studying. And if I ever missed one question, he would visibly show a lot of frustration and disappointment. And I always remembered feeling, of course, bothered by it, right? Because I would be like, man, what's the big deal? I'm just asking you for your help. You don't have to react so negatively to this. So to see myself being this way now, whether like I handle it internally or not, or just like, recognizing the emotions that I'm feeling can be a bummer because um, these are definitely things I want to work on. I have no desire to continue living my life feeling anxiety over a dog training session because I fear that he's going to fail. That's just so unpleasant to feel leading up to a moment. Like I sometimes spend so much time feeling negative emotions leading up to something and then it obviously doesn't even go as I expect it to and also my expectations are just way too high way too high because whenever I think of these board and trains I'm thinking oh within two weeks I need to turn around a perfect dog I need a dog that's going to listen to commands like Rally does and that's just not realistic. Two weeks is actually not enough time at all. Two weeks is a good time to set up the foundation with the house structure. So we practice it every single day. And I'm really happy about it because Koa has been doing a really, really, really good job with house structure. Like when he's sitting out the door, he does not break it early ever. And he doesn't need me to say it. He does it automatically. So that's great. With him on place right now, he has very rarely gotten off of it uh, prematurely. I just feel like I have a hard time appreciating or even like celebrating what I've done because it's, it's so interesting for me to be struggling with this when sometimes when I take the time to think about what I've achieved so far, not just specifically with Koa, but just with my business as well, um, it's been just over two months now and I feel like I've been doing pretty good. I think I've had around 10 clients so far, roughly. So that is basically a mix of majority private lessons and then this is my second board and train. And I do have a new client with lessons coming up this Tuesday, but I just feel like for the most part, like. It's so weird because when I approach this business, um, I didn't actually fear failure. I just don't feel that way. So in a similar sense, when it comes to work, I don't fear being laid off. I don't fear losing my job. 
I never have. I also don't behave in a way at my job that encourages me to like secure my spot. So I say that in the sense where, you know, people try to do certain things to appear more positive to higher up. Maybe it's like networking or showing up at company events or attending things or just like behaving in a certain way to cater to them. I never do that. I have never done that. I have no desire to do that. And I don't worry about losing my job. So in a similar sense, when I started this business, I did not worry about it failing. I felt confident that it would work out fine because I approached it in a similar way as the way I approach finding a new job or same thing, finding a new house. They all feel similar to me because they take time and you keep trying until the right fit comes along. So for work, um, like the last time, yeah, the last time I was job hunting, I was so, so unhappy. And there were so many times where, yeah, my mood was so low that I had no desire to apply for a job, but you know, I kept going at it and then eventually I found my current job, which the, once I made the switch, I noticed the change immediately. The impact was so drastic where I was no longer so unhappy going to work, but instead I was trying something new and learning new things and also like being around new people. So in the same sense for the business, um, there are slow periods, of course. There's also periods where there's like a lot of interest, but people don't actually sign up. Um, but just in general, like I don't worry about stuff like that, but instead I worry about these smaller details um, my thoughts are kind of all over the place, but yeah, I, um, I feel like I've done a pretty good job and, you know, when I look at some of the videos that I've done with Koa so far, that has only been eight days because it's Sunday today and I still have six more days to work with him. So I could probably like, you know, do a lot of good with him and continue on with it and I haven't really stopped to appreciate the work that I've done because every single time I notice a slight mistake in him I focus so hard on thinking like all right we got to work on that more because he's clearly a little bit weak at it like for example today I have been fretting over recall so much today, so much. One of my concerns was that, um, I don't wanna go too deep into this because I do feel like it is, you know, very tedious. I don't think people will understand why I've been so anal over this, but it's a perfection thing, I guess. Um, so basically with recall, and whenever I watch other people training, right, the trainers that I respect and admire and follow and learn from, obviously you wanna reach a point with the dog where when it comes to recall, they're just dragging the leash because they know the command and they no longer need the leash to understand and reliably come back to you, reliably. <laughs> so I was worried about that because I felt like up until now, I haven't been able to achieve that yet. Or I think it was also my fear of not trying it and seeing him fail and then guiding him. So basically what I've been having so far is similar, but more of like a guarantee for me that I can have control. Instead of letting him drag the leash, I have just been holding it loose though. Basically in the same sense where I'm not using the leash at all, but it exists between us rather than him dragging it and I have no control over it. So earlier I've been thinking like, oh my God, I really need to get him to recall to me with no leash. Cause like if I always have a leash in between us, we're never gonna graduate to him like really solidly knowing the command and doing it with, you know, just dragging a leash. So I had my session earlier and I tested it out. I dropped it and I walked away and I asked him to recall and he stood there and he stared at me. 
So then I walked over, picked up the leash, and then guided him to me after. And then repeated that a couple more times with completely no leash pressure at all. And then I dropped it again and asked him to come to me. And he did three to four times with dragging the leash. And I was so happy with that. So the thing is, um, I definitely know I'm capable of problem solving how to best approach something with a dog because I can think logically very well and piecing together like if I do this, if I do this, like you know, if I reward this, then the dog with repetition will learn what the desired behavior is. I can figure that out. It's just sometimes I don't even think about the time and repetition it takes for the dog to really take hold and start to mimic the behavior that I desire. I just feel like <laughs> if you watch this video, it's just like a big jumble of ridiculous things to stress and feel anxious over, but it's good to get them out because I really want to improve this aspect of myself. And in fact, when I had my breakup with Jose in February, I started meditating every single day for 15 minutes. And I was actually very excited that I was being consistent with it because I know for a fact that meditation is really beneficial for me. There have been so many times where I would be struggling to fall asleep because of my mind racing and not being able to shut down. So I feel like having the ability to just meditate and kind of like clear your mind, clear your thoughts, and also like settle everything down would really benefit me. So I would like to start up on that again. I think little by little, I want to tackle these flaws that I have. Well, it'll be challenging because obviously I can't very easily change my thought process, but I think the best thing I can do for now is if I feel anxious leading up to something, I'll try my best to not even allow my brain to fixate on it. I have to practice a lot of what I preach when it comes to dog training. Similar, where like if a dog is fixating on something, it starts to escalate and they can explode in some negative ways, whether it's reactivity or something else. So this is the same thing where I am stressed leading up to something and I keep thinking about it, it's gonna make it worse. So the best thing that I can do is train myself to not worry about it until it actually happens. And then we'll see how it goes. And then if it goes poorly, then we can have a reaction to it. But worrying about it before it has even happened is pretty ridiculous and a waste of brain power in my opinion. So, um, I have noticed that dog training, when I have boarding trains, obviously it does tend to worry me a bit more because a lot of my time is completely planned out. Like during the week for work, I gotta work and train throughout the entire day. Uh, going out of the house during the day also makes me feel a little uncomfortable because then it feels like I'm running away from my duties but I need to find that balance because, you know, boarding and train does not mean my life revolves around this dog. I still need my life. And if I am not at my best emotionally, then I can't really address the dog in the best manner as well. So I need to find that balance, making sure I keep myself happy, still have time to myself, and then train the dog as well. So there might be some things that I'm missing in terms of whatever the heck I'm thinking but I think um, that's the best that I can do for now so I hope everyone has been doing well um, I got a haircut today <laughs> I needed it because my hair was getting dry and disgusting and very damaged and unhealthy so I'm so glad I got a cut today and I need to touch it less I touch it way too much but yeah, I think right now it's just going to be a movie night for me. I've started watching Gilmore Girls over again from season one. So if I can't find a good movie to watch, I might just watch that because I adore that show. And it always touches me so deeply. So 
I'm going to go do that. Have a good night, everyone.